Hey what's up everyone and welcome to daily code buffer. In this video we are going to see a Kubernetes configuration using YAML file and what are the different parts or components available in a particular configuration file. So let's get started. So in a typical Kubernetes component configuration file there are many components that we can look for. The first one that will be a API version. So which API version that we are using for a particular component. So there are different components available in a different version of Kubernetes APIs. So that information we can define in the API version. The next one is a kind. So what is the kind of a component? Either that kind would be deployment, either it would be service, either it would be replica set and other. So kind will define what is the component that we are trying to create. The next three are very important. A metadata, a specification and a status. So this three defines a component. The first one will be the metadata. So metadata defines the data about that particular component. Like we can define the name of that particular component. You can define multiple labels for that particular component. So all those information will be coming inside a metadata attributes or metadata tags. The next one is a specification. So what is a specification for that particular component? Now all the components will be having a different specification tags or attributes related to that particular component. Like deployment will be having a different set of attributes in a specification and service might be having a different set of attributes for that particular specification. So this way a specification attributes may differ but a specification will remain the same. Every component will be having a specifications. The next one is the status. We don't define status when we create the configuration files. But when we pass that configuration files to the API server, Kubernetes API server, status attributes is created by the Kubernetes. So how it's been created? Whenever we define a specification for any of the components, we give a desired behavior. Like this is the desired behavior that we want. Kubernetes stores those information in the etcd server, etcd key store. So all the information is been stored there and Kubernetes will try to understand okay this is the desired behavior and based on that desired behavior based on that specification provided we need to create the components described. So this way all the components will be described and those components will be stored in the status fields, status attributes for that particular configuration. So we will see in the demo like how to get the status once we create the components. So these are all the basic things that a configuration file will be having. API server kind, what is the kind of the component? what is the specification, what is the metadata and the status. So let's see a demo file and create a components from it. So let me open the Visual Studio. Here I have created a two files, two component. One is a deployment component and one is the service component. So let's see all those information. As we saw, you can see that both will be having the API version. You can see that both are, both are the different components and both are in the different API versions. One is in apps v1, one is in the v1. Kind, the next one is the kind. So this one is a deployment and this one is a service. The next is the metadata information. So you can see that in this metadata information, both is having the name of that particular deployment and name of the particular service. Here I have given my app deploy as the name of this deployment. And for the service, I have given my app SVC as the name of the service. And we can also define the labels and these labels will define your entire application. You can use these labels for the selecting your particular components. And next you can see that specifications. Okay. so. For the deployment specification, you can see that the attributes are different and for the service, the attributes are different. So in the specifications of the deployment, we have defined the replicas as one. So I need one replica of the pod for the containers that we have passing in our deployment. So I have defined that and I have defined the selector. What should I select to create a replica? So there I have given match labels. Okay. I should match the selector with the labels that I am providing and the label it should match is app my app. So this is the same label that we have provided in our template. So this template is the blueprint of our pods. So in this template, you can see that we have again defined the metadata and the specifications. So you can see that in this template, in this blueprint, I have given metadata as labels app my app. So this will match with the match label selectors over here. And what is the specification for it? The specification for it is it is having the containers. Okay. That container name is my app pod. The image to use in that particular container is daily code buffer slash docker publish dot zero dot zero dot three version and what is the ports available. So my container port is 9091. So these are all the information of my particular pod and I've given the label as my app. This my app will be selected 
while creating their replicas in this match labels and my deployment will be created now i want to create a service also i want to expose my endpoints to the end users to as a service so i'm creating this service as well so here i'm creating the service i have given the metadata as my app svc i have given the specification as type node port and the ports detail i have given the ports detail i have given is my service should be running on port 9092 but my target port where it should connect to that is 9091 my application should be connected to 9091 port of which application that i have given as a selector that selector is my app so the number of replicas that are been created with the name my app as the labels all will be connected to this particular service and all those ports will be accessed using the service endpoint using the port 9092 and internally it will be having a load balancer that will load balance all the requests to port 9091 of all the replicas that we have so you can see that this is how we can create the configuration files you can see that it is very overwhelming to see the configuration but it's very easy it is just having a configuration it is having a specific configuration for each and every components all the components will be having a specific kind a metadata specification and the status of it so let's see how to create those files okay let's see how to create these components so we'll go to the command prompt over here and there we will create a deployment first and we will create the service so let's go to the command prompt if i see over here i don't have any deployments for now okay so we'll be creating a deployment and if you see the kubectl service also i have only basic service that is a kubernetes default service available so now let's create a deployment as in the last video we saw that how to create a service using the kubectl we'll use the same command kubectl apply hyphen f deploy.yml so this will create my deployment okay my deployment is created let's see it kubectl get spelling is wrong okay get deployment you can see that my deployment is created let's create the service as well okay so i'll just use kubectl apply hyphen f svc.yml and you can see that my service is also created to see the service we'll just use kubectl get service okay you can see that my app service is created now how to verify that my service which is created is been having the same port that has been desired right so to see that information what we'll do is we'll describe the service okay so let's do that kubectl describe service and i'll give the service name so this is my service okay and here you can see that the name of the service the namespace and you can see the ip address of the service okay the port information which we gave 9092 and here you can see the endpoint which is connected you can see the endpoint which is connected is 172.18.0.4 so this would be the endpoint ip address for my pod so let's see that pod details as well so if i see kubectl get pods over here you can see that we are not getting that information over here right what is the ip address so to see that what we'll do is we'll use kubectl get pods and we will use the output flag okay hyphen o is an output flag and i want the wide information all the information for this particular pod so i'll use the wide flag over here okay so you can see that i'm getting the all information over here so we'll get the nodes which is running on and the ip address so it's running on minikube and the ip address is 172.18.0.4 this is the same as over here right and which is running on port 9091 which is connected to this particular ip address and port 9092 this is my service which is created so now we earlier saw that status is a component of any of the configuration and that will be created when we apply those configurations to the kubernetes server so let's see that as well so once the components are created we can get the status out of it we can get the status in the yaml file or in the json file as well so currently we just created our components using the yaml file so let's see that yaml file itself what has been created okay let me clear it out first and let me just get kubectl get deployments and here what I'll do is I'll you just use kubectl get deployment I want output in the yaml file so once I hit enter you can see that my entire yaml file which I've created I've got if I go over here so this is the entire yaml file so here you can see that this is the entire configuration file and all the different components for this particular deployment and if you scroll down over here there will be a status field you can see that these are the specs and all those information and you can see that here is a status right so you can see that 
the status have all the different informations like available replicas is one condition is last transaction time last updated time messages reason status okay all those information you can see that ready replica is one replicas is one updated replicas is one all those information all the entire status is been stored and we'll get that information all those information will be stored in the etcd key store so whenever we change any configuration it will match with this particular status and whatever changes has to be done it will do the changes so this is how we can get the status of all the components as well so let's clear it out first so currently i am running everything locally in my mini cube so i won't be having the external ip to connect to my service so to get the service running in your local you need to get the service from the mini cube so let's see how we can do and how we can open our service and we, how we can interact with our pods that we have created so if you do over here kubectl get service you can see that this is a service that has been created so to connect to this particular service we have to use the minikube node okay we have to use the minikube command so what we'll do we'll do just minikube service and we will give this service so minikube will create a tunnel for us so that we can directly access this service in our kubernetes cluster okay something is wrong okay the spelling is wrong right it should be minikube so it will create a tunnel for us we'll wait for a second you can see that my application is running right subscribe to daily code buffer we are getting so guys subscribe to my channel for the upcoming awesome videos so you can see that these are all the information the tunnel information that has been created using the mini cube so we are able to connect to these services that we created so these are all the components and all the different configurations that you can use in your kubernetes configuration file kubernetes yaml file and it's very easy to create yaml configuration files the only issue i have faced creating the yaml file yaml configuration file is the indentation so that is the only thing that you have to take care of so rest everything is very easy you just have to do the practice of it i hope you have got the value out of this particular video for kubernetes configuration yaml file and if you have liked this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming new videos till then happy coding bye bye